Well, that's definitely my feelings. Uh, you know, I would suggest if you wonder about that, you, you let's just say cylinder one and six, since they're both pistons are in the same place, and put put a dial indicator on one cylinder and a degree wheel on the front and a dial indicator on the other side and rotate it through with uh, different length rods and and that's the best way to, I don't can't tell you the numbers right off my head right now to see that, but we had a, GM wondered about that years ago and they, they commissioned us to run a test on a, a NASCAR motor and we uh, <clears throat> built one engine and we built uh, one with a six one uh, a six one twenty five rod uh, and piston, and the other with a uh, a five five fifty. We went as extreme as we could. I remember doing it well, and uh, it was a three four eighty stroke at the time. And we ran the engine. Uh, we took the heads off, we put the other rods and pistons in with the rings off the, end, the rings that were already broke into those cylinders, did, ran the test the best we could. And when we got done and had the dyno sheets uh, off the Superflow, I looked at them, I wasn't sure what I'd seen, I'd felt that was the case from the degree wheel thing. And uh, you couldn't tell which one was which, it wasn't anything you could see. I mean, there's other things that are more important than that. You don't want to sacrifice, probably rod is the, the, you don't want to pull the piston too far out of the bottom of the cylinder. I mean, that, that's a little bit of a consideration, but you also got to consider runner length and manifold alignment and things like that that are more important than a little bit of theory on rods. So I will, I'll stand by that forever, I've seen that many times. No, that's not what's critical in those engines. I mean, what you're dealing with in, you know, it's, it's a, You've got a situation that uh, you've got a tremendous oxi oxidizer in the nitrous, and which is evidenced by how, how fast the burn is. And, uh, and that's backed up by the fact that you can say, you know, you might take an engine that would call for 30 degrees of time, and, and then when you run it on nitrous, it's, it's going to be uh, five or six degrees, you know. So, and, you know, that's an example of, of uh, what, what you're dealing with the, with the nitrous. So basically what you do is there's, there's things that the way that the engine's set up as far as combustion chambers and clearances and things like that, that you make an effort to slow combustion down. But again, that the piston dwell is immeasurable in difference. So that, those aren't the things that, that affect it. Well, yes, I ha we have. We've run hundreds of cams. You know, I'm, I'm not, uh, again, I've, I have never seen very, very minute differences. The, the rod is, you know, you're, you're working on, on differential pressure. That's the only thing that fills the cylinder. And that's, the t cam timing is much more related to the port than it is the position of the valve. I mean the position of the piston. And the, and the differences are slight, eight ten thousandths maximum. And so when you think of that, and you think of the whole volume you're dealing with, those are very slight. What's probably more important in, in that subject matter is to have as good a piston as you can have so that the piston stay straight in the bore when it changes directions at the top and the bottom. And that promotes and optimizes ring seal, which is 
the most important thing that we do because the best heads in the world aren't worth anything if we can't seal the rings up. So if we've got to put a shorter rod in an engine to optimize the piston because of the barrel length and the stroke, that's what we're going to do. We're not going to put some stupid little piston that's this long in it to get the rod ratio from 1.4 to 1.6 and lose all the ring seal at the same time and, and not have any skirt in the motor and not have any ring band in the motor. So I always put the best piston in and figure out the stroke and then do what I have to with the rod length for the barrel length. An engine is everything you, you can really make some bad decisions if you get a hung up on one part of an engine because there's nothing that you can do to an engine that doesn't affect something else in the engine. I mean, you, you may think, oh, well, I'll change cams. Well, that could alter the whole engine, for example. I need more valve clearance. Oh, well, now the ring needs to go down and, you know, things like that change. So that, that's just one of the hundreds of examples, but there's, there's nothing in an engine. You have to always be thinking of the whole things and what you're trying to do is re you need to remember everything's a compromise and you got to figure out what are the best compromises. And of the, you know, so that kind of, to me, you know, s simplifies it, but that, that's what you're doing when you're trying to design an engine. And you also need to figure out, well, what's the purpose of this engine? 